Uh, as somebody who spent a lot of time on the border, being a border state with the largest border, I know these issues and I see them every day. And if there is one group benefiting from this, I can tell you who it is. It's the cartels. Let me say that one more time. There's one group benefiting from the policies of the Biden administration. It is the cartels. I stand uh, geographically uh, right between Corpus and Houston on US 59, which is, has long been a corridor uh, into Houston as the number one human trafficking site and, and hub in our state, leading to other states here. Additionally, uh, the county above me, uh, Lavaca County, uh, we share a border between the two counties that's currently being used by the cartel uh, daily, if not hourly. We are not what you would consider a border county. We're 275 miles from, from uh, McAllen, from the border. Uh, but we are affected by the border crisis every day. We, we deal with, with pursuits, bailouts, human smuggling, narcotics. All of that is coming up Highway 77 and US 98, which is, comes through Lavaca County. So these two areas uh, alone make this a valuable area for cartel involvement, uh, which really has been empowered to a point by this federal administration where they uh, have unprecedented levels of uh, money uh, that, uh, where they profited from, this, from these policies. It's becoming a real problem. We've had issues for years. There's always been an influx of folks coming across this border. Not a surprise. It's always going to be. It's always been that way. But we're at a point today, right now, we're worse than we have ever been. This is a problem that isn't like it used to be. The people coming across or not just from Mexico, the world's coming across. We have 70 different countries coming across and the federal government doesn't even want to acknowledge it. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the past administration uh, was able to kind of dwindle things down and it started working. Things were working pretty well. Now, uh, it's almost as if we have no borders, no borders at all. And it's affecting all of us across, not just the South Texas region, but it's affecting us across the United States. This has become a, a, a national problem. And, and I know some people, well, you know, I, I don't see it in my hometown. You will. Eventually, you're going to see it in your hometown because it's floating from the south north. Whenever I was elected in January as county attorney, I saw this happening and I was kind of limited on what I could do. So I did it. The only thing I knew I could is declare local state disaster. And the landowners, the ranchers, they want safety for their families. For their, you know, it, that's not a political issue. Safety is not a political issue. It's a human issue, and that's what we're experiencing down here. The the effects here for constituents is is uh, really one of fear, uh, where we have a large part of our constituents who are daily telling me. The, the concern that they have over these policies and what they're causing here. Well, we, we run cattle and Angora goats here, but our main source of income is hunting. And we, we have two groups that pay a year-round lease and they're family groups. They like to bring their wives and their kids. If you're afraid, would you want to bring your family out here and and be exposed to, you don't know what, you don't know who's out there. You don't know if they're criminals, they're catching them with drugs, with guns. That's one of the things that, that you just don't know and is unnerving. The other side is, what about the ones we aren't seeing? So what are those numbers out there on that? I mean, you know, 180,000 we apprehended. So what are we, what are we catching? 20%, 30%? You know, I'm not gonna sit here and do math, but I'm sure you can 
triple or double that numbers of what's in here that we don't know about. And who are they? You know, are they terrorists? Are they, you know, criminal thugs, MS-13? Who are they? We have no clue, but they're now in the U.S. population. And I think that's the other major thing we need to knock on and let, let the general public, these people up northeast, everybody understand. They're going to eventually come to your town. They're going to get there. And you don't know who they are. Uh, we seem to get no help uh, whatsoever from the, from the federal uh, agencies. Our Border Patrol that, that services Jackson County, Lamarca County, this area is totally overwhelmed. Most of those have been sent to the border to try and help there for the masses of people that are coming across the border on these policies. The policies that have been put in place since the first of the year have uh, totally reversed control of the border. It's unreal. I mean, it's like Wild West out here. Nobody can come out and respond to us. You know, you call Border Patrol or Sheriff, hey, we can't get out. It's frustrating because you know now that you're on your own. It, it, it is it is a crisis on the border. It, it depletes all of our resources. Whenever we have one of these pursuits, we're a small agency. We, I only have uh, 14 deputies that work for me from my chief deputy on down. So uh, whenever we get in a pursuit, uh, basically my whole office empties out and everybody's involved in that situation, which takes us away from our, our regular duties of patrolling and, and, and everything else that we do for the communities. Well, you know, several months ago when uh, we filed the local state of disaster because our resources were just, it was beyond being stretched thin, they were just non-existent anymore. One of the things about our community is we have one ambulance. You know, if we have a bailout call, our resources are there. All of our resources are there. Hey, wait, hey, amigo, hey, we got help, medical. And the paramedic's the only one that can administer certain drugs or procedures on someone that's dying or in, you know, very serious harm. When that ambulance was out on a call because of a bailout and an accident with human smuggling. Someone in our community, a taxpaying citizen, had a heart attack, ended up dying. That, that really affects everyone, not only the cost of that for our small community, but the impact on our resources and our people. And the EMS director I was speaking to told me, you know, if we could have been there, we could have saved your life. But we didn't have the resources we needed at that time. So she, unfortunately, she died because of the Biden policies in place and because us not having the emergency medical care that we need. And that's a sad reality of, of what a policy can do to people in our type of county. And it's, uh, it's going to get worse. And once the summer months hit even worse and it gets hot, there's going to be a lot more people dying and there's going to be a lot more confrontations for water and everything else. It's going to become violent. Well, and the other thing people seem to overlook is, you know, say our sheriff, you know, arrests someone that has a criminal record and when they release it under the current policies, ICE can't accept them they're coming out of a jail or detention center. So the, the sheriff is put in a hard spot. He has two options. He can deport them or release them into the public. And a lot of sheriffs that I know, they, they'd rather violate their oath to a public policy of Biden than their constitutional oath to the county residents. The only solution that we can have has to have something that removes that danger. And I believe deportation has to be a part of the solution because having that, what, where can you house over a million people at that are legally into this country? You can't, unless you make an entire new city somewhere. The cost of doing that is astronomical. So deportation, I believe, has to be part of the solution. And that's what a lot of ranchers here think as well. So I think in the end note of this whole deal is, you know, we are getting hit hard financially and stuff. So we really need to try to do something to slow this down where we're not gonna slow it down completely, but I think what we could help is we need to learn, f figure out a way to free Border Patrol from babysitting and adult daycare and processing and where they can get out in the field and actually secure our borders in the areas where we need it the most. It's adamant that, that we get the attention of the president to know what's going on on the border. We we, we try to get this out in front of the community every day. We try to put it out there. We want his attention. We want him to pay attention to what's going on. And 
we need to, to secure that border again like like we had in the past and it's just it's not happening right now and basically we're being ignored by the current administration it's it's gonna continue to cascade and snowball into this uh, problem that we're not gonna be able to handle if we don't get something done soon and when it spills out it's gonna be so rampant that you're not gonna be able to control it it's gonna get to the point where there is no control of it you're not going to be able to control it or stop it. We have to do something now. And this is the things that we need to, the American people to understand. We need the American people to understand. I understand you don't see it, but pull your head out of your, out of your sandbox and look around and see what's going. If you don't believe it, come down and look at it. We, we've asked the president and vice president, don't hide in your basement. Come down to the border and take a look for yourself. Instead of going by what you want to push out as a political agenda, it's not a political agenda. It is a real world crisis, and if we don't stop it, it's going to affect everybody eventually to the point where we're not going to have an America. The United States will cease to exist. Every time you go out in the pasture, you find something. Gates left open, they're cutting the high fences and leaving holes in them. And uh, that creates a lot of danger for us. It's creating property damage, animals and livestock getting out on public property. And a lot of liability there that we're worried about.